Hi, this is Matthew Cruz with Creighton Radiology, and welcome to the mini lecture on bladder masses. Let's get started. We're going to begin the lecture with discussion of bladder malignancy, and the most typical presentation of bladder malignancy is painless hematuria. Less common presentations include incidental finding on other imaging, frequency or urgency, dysuria, or pelvic pain. The major risk factors for bladder malignancy are smoking and age over 65. Some less common risk factors in the literature include occupational exposures, for example, working at a manufacturing plant for chemical dyes, chronic infection, bladder calculi, cyclophosphamide use, or prior radiation. In this slide, we're primarily referring to urothelial carcinoma, which is also known as transitional cell carcinoma, as this comprises 90% of bladder malignancies. Regarding our discussion of urothelial malignancy, if you have a patient with gross hematuria or with microscopic hematuria and risk factors, those patients should generally be referred to urology for cystoscopy and often for a CT or MR urogram. The CT or MR urogram is the first line imaging test for suspected bladder malignancy. This is a multi-phase test which includes a delayed phase where contrast has been excreted into the bladder. There's contrast noted within the collecting systems, ureters, and bladder, so we can outline the normal urothelial tract and look for any wall thickening or filling defects. It's important to include the entire urinary tract in this imaging test, as urothelial cancer is often multifocal. Imaging features of urothelial malignancy. A urothelial cancer is an enhancing mass arising from the mucosal layer of the bladder or urinary tract. The mass may be polypoid or ball-shaped, or it may be sessile or flat. We do need pre- and post-contrast imaging to prove the enhancement, and this is included in both the CT and MR urogram protocols. At the bottom of the slide, you see three axial CT images through the pelvis. The left image is pre-contrast, the middle image is venous phase, and the right image is delayed phase, or urogram excretory phase. At the anterior left aspect of the bladder, there is an enhancing mass, which you can see on the middle image, clearly increased in density from the non-contrast image. On the delayed phase, the mass is outlined by excreted contrast material. This is a typical appearance of a mass on the delayed or urogram phase. It's seen as a filling defect surrounded by excreted contrast. Another example is seen at the upper portion of the slide with an axial CT image on the left and a coronal CT image on the right. There is a lobulated mass at the left posterior aspect of the bladder adjacent to the ureterovesicular junction, which is indicated by the white arrow. If you encounter a bladder mass that is not enhancing, the differential includes hematoma, calculus, fungus ball, or ureterocele. Urothelial malignancy can of course occur anywhere there is urothelium and so it can occur in the bladder, ureters, renal pelvis, or renal collecting system. This cancer is also notorious for multiplicity. There is a very high rate of synchronous and metachronous lesions of the urinary tract. So if you find a bladder mass on a scan, we need to closely investigate the renal pelvises and ureters for additional lesions. The urogram phase, or the delayed contrast excretion phase, is especially helpful for evaluation of the renal collecting systems and ureters. This CT image in the upper central area of the slide demonstrates a filling defect in the anterior aspect of the right renal pelvis. This was a urothelial cancer. An additional CT image through the mid-abdomen in the upper right aspect of the slide demonstrates circumferential thickening of the left mid-ureter this is also a site of urothelial cancer. A dedicated bladder MRI protocol is increasingly used for staging 
of known bladder cancers. At the lower aspect of this slide, on the left, we see a small bladder cancer at the answer aspect of the bladder, indicated by the white arrow. The muscularis layer of the bladder, or the detrusor muscle, is intact, indicated by the black arrow, and this is a T1 stage tumor. Conversely, in the right lower image, there is a large bladder mass which is growing through the muscularis layer into the perivesicular fat. This would be a T3 stage tumor. Non-urothelial bladder cancers are much less common, and there are two main subtypes. Squamous cell carcinoma comprises 3 to 8% of all bladder cancers. Risk factors include schistosomiasis, which is less common in the U.S., and chronic infection or irritation. The more common patient in the U.S. would be chronic indwelling catheter or recurrent bladder stones, which results in chronic inflammation and a risk for cancer. Bladder adenocarcinoma comprises approximately 1% of cases. These may be uracal or non-uracal in origin. The uracus is the embryologic remnant of the structure which drains the bladder to the umbilical cord in fetal life. The CT image at the right aspect of the slide demonstrates an enhancing mass at the midline bladder dome. This corresponds to the insertion of the uracus, and there is a small tract which will extend up toward the umbilicus. This was a case of uracal adenocarcinoma. Benign bladder masses are rare, and when combined, account for less than 1% of all bladder tumors. These are typically non-mucosal in origin, arising from the muscular layer of the bladder or traversing nerves or blood vessels. Subtypes include lyomyoma arising from the smooth muscle, hemangioma from blood vessels, paraganglioma or neurofibroma arising from traversing nerves. The MR image on the right aspect of the screen includes a smoothly marginated mass at the right aspect of the bladder. You might suggest that the mucosal layer appears intact and this mass is actually arising from within the wall of the bladder. This proved to be a lyomyoma. This concludes the discussion of bladder masses. Thank you.